They talked about the zoning. Nobody talked about presidential election. So all the people you see doing acrobatics with their mouth, they're just trying to say things. We have done that. We have done it. We finished it. We, as a political party, we practiced national zonings mm -hmm. in 2015, 2014. Yes. Some members of our party formed a breakaway unit called MPDP. They used that MPDP to bring in President Buhari. President, and their own mantra was, it is turn of the north. It is turn of the north. MPDP brought in President Buhari. He, President Buhari has done eight years and has now weaponized nepotism in a way that could destroy the country. Our governors have every right to come in to set purpose towards helping the country. What we've just done, simple, will force the APC to do the right thing. National sharing of power is based on North and South. So the North has done eight years. If it is members of the MPDP that funded it, that forced it to occur, they've done it. So MPDP members are now back to PDP. Since Peter Buari has done the eight years, it is now the turn of the South to also experience it. That's why the zoning was done that way. And what was discussed was the zoning. Secondly, our leaders, when they are given duties to do, we accept as party men what they do. And they have done that, and we've accepted it. One argument within your own PDP is that if you take a look at the 16 years the PDP ruled, that more of that period was spent you know, by someone from the south of the country. That's why I told you the PDP is a political party whose members in 2014 formed a faction called MPDP. That MPDP went into a coalition with other Nigerians and betted a president from the north. And that man has done eight years. So you cannot, after he does eight years, you now come and tell us that you don't agree with the consequences of those actions. No. That's how it should be. Now so that, nobody is a fool. That eight Whatever years. MPDP does... Is also what PDP people did. That's what we're trying to tell you. The eight years you're referring to yes. with President Momo Dubuari, right? Yes. That's that's supposed to be with another political party. No, no, it's not true. The the APC is uh, in that case a halfway home of the PDP members who wanted to bring a presidency from the north, and that's what they did. Okay, without the contributions of the MPDP, their money, their funding, their behavior, Buhari will not be president. So what we are saying is, you don't do this, and then next time you now form CPDP, you also do the same thing. No, 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 no. Politicians must be willing to accept responsibilities for their actions. And that's what it is. Our members, I didn't say other people, went to form a party called APC. Who inside that place is not a PDP member? Tell me now. Buhari is not implementing policies of the PDAPC as a coalition. It is the agenda of the Miet Allah. And that's what has gotten the country into its security crisis. So those peop people who brought Buhari to power has come back to us. And now what we're telling them is, since you've done this thing, let us also think this way. I don't think anything is wrong in what has happened. Let us leave it at that. You know, trying to say anybody can do this. No, because the same people say anybody uh, can do this, anybody can run, are the same people that formed the MPDP for the simple reason of bringing a president from the north. So, because of the weaponized deportism and the way President Buhari has so dismantled and disorganized the country, you need somebody that could come in and neutralize all that he's done. If not, the youth we move to the front and seize the ground and we don't want the youth because the youth will do things that could make the country not exist anymore and we don't want that the uh, actions of president buhari which is attributable to the decision by members of the mpdp to bring him to power we see that so don't tell me it's only this side no whatever me and you are doing and you go to Mura and do something else. When you return to me, I'll remind you of that thing you've done. So you're, you're clearly looking at a situation where both the PDP and the APC will be looking towards the South. That is what will happen with the decision of the PDP. So all we've done is to intervene in a way to save the country, not just the party. Do you think 
when that happens, your party will have what it takes to be able to um, defeat APC at the polls. Well, if APC becomes a political party, then they might then be able to challenge us. But today, they're not a political party. It's a coalition. Once they won the election, Buhari trashed them, threw them under the bus, and started ruling alone. And that's why we're saying those who made that decision undermine the country. Even though they thought they gained the north. Okay, fine. Let us stabilize for the country. Well, I don't think this is uh, this thing. It's not difficult to understand. So that when we do this now, next time we don't set such precedents. Buhari would never have been president if members of the PDP didn't go to bring him to power. Taking a great good look at your own political party as it stands now, and if you're going for an election at 2023, where do you think your best um, 11, so to speak, using football uh, metaphor, mm. where do you think, which direction do you think you should look at you know, uh, if, you, if you are planning to win that election? Planning to win an election? If you are planning to win that election in 2023. Yes. What should we do? Yes, strategizing to win that election in 2023 between the North and the South. And you want to put your best foot forward. Where do you think your party should take a look at? Right now, there is no argument about between the North and the South. The argument we have right now is between the Mieti Allah and the rest of the country. <laughs> you keep talking about Mieti Allah. Mieti Allah is Mieti Allah a political party? Well, well, it's not a political party, but what Buhari does is implement the agenda of the Mieti Allah. So it is a Mieti Allah. Listen, because when you see Biram killed in Jos, when you see Governor Otom cry in Benue State, when you see the Kaka and the Pensa complain and cry in Gembu Mambila, when you see the Adara, the Bagi, get killed in Kaduna, these are Nigerians. When you see the Wurukum, the Tangale complain in Gombe, these are Nigerians. You understand that? So these people being killed, being ethnically cleansed, their voices being heard across the country, represented by the screams and cries of Governor Autumn. A TV. And, and that's how we're looking I, I, at I, it. And you think shifting power to the South will be the antidote to all of what you've just said? Well, shifting power to somebody who will reconstruct and reassert the Nigerian dream. Because the Nigerian dream is an arrangement that's inclusive of the diverse and indigenous people of Nigeria. And you don't think that can still come from the north, even from Katsina State? Well, we believe right now, to be, to be honest to you, nobody from the north can stop the full insurgency. That's just the truth. Forget about all the pretensions. Nobody from the north has the capacity to stop the fallen insurgency. And because of that insurgency, and the fact that none of them have spoken about it or against it, let us save the country. Nigeria should come first, my brother. Forget about persons. People don't matter. The country should come first. Nigeria is more important than anything else. Let's think about Nigeria. When Nigerians are killed in Benue, in Taraba, in Plateau, these are Nigerians. Why should they be in IDP camps? And foreigners live in their villages. Why should we do that and people keep quiet? Please think about Nigeria first, not about private people who seek power for themselves. It is time for us to look to Nigeria. The governors are met in Lagos, Enugu, and Asaba are Nigerians of different diverse ethnicities, plus the voice of Governor Tom, who came to represent the indigenous people of northern Nigeria. This is how we look at it. It is the whole of the country against the Mieti Allah. That's what we're doing. What, what, where then is the place of merit um, if you're looking for uh, a presidential candidate, someone who can pull Nigeria out from the place you said we are right now? Are, are we not supposed to be looking at um, merit? You know? Well, you've heard what uh, elder statesmen like uh, uh, President Babangida, former President. Uh, uh, Obasanjo, they all said, look for a young person who understands economics. People with proven records of administrative successes. And we can find a lot of those young people across southern Nigeria. I don't think that's a big issue. So trying to uh, get frightened about the numbers fraud concurred by Buhari, when you do election somewhere in the south, you lose to card reader. When you do somewhere in the north, you allow them to write numbers, and then tomorrow you say that's a disparity. How come the numbers you show us don't reflect when you put 
direct satellite imagery. They don't reflect in school enrollment. They don't reflect in uh, VAT payment. They don't reflect in economic activity. They don't reflect in anything except when you do it fraudulently and then you use INEC, whatever you have, to then impose those things. And after some time, you start saying it's true. If you look at the equator, right from Timbuktu, stretching down to Somalia, Nigeria is the only place where the army told us more people live in the desert areas than where you have water. It's a fraud. And of course, you know, President Buhari's government is deceitful. President Buhari is fundamentally dishonest. And that's why you know nothing about his government should be believed by anybody. We, the PDP, were actually trying to move the country into something the international community can refer to, can read, can predict. He has not destroyed it. Look at it. We've been in perpetual recession. Last month, we did 0.9% contraption. His government said it was 5%. How could you have 5% of economic growth and nobody feels it? Those things don't make sense. You can't rule the country with lie and deceit. It does not work that way. It should not sustain. But in eight years has taken us behind 40, 45 years. Now, if you... So if we you, need to find a way to change this. If you claim that this government hasn't done very well or you know, has not done so much, so why then? How, how do you then explain... Um, the movements of people from your own party, the PDP, mm -hmm. to the same APC. What's people going who on? Are people who are integrity challenged people were not perfect. So those who are integrity challenged, when shown files by the EFCC of intentions to commit them, they do that. Call who you want to talk, and I will show you that his case at EFCC is very close to sentencing. So, uh, these are human reactions. Anybody that has a sentencing issue and jumps to the APC, it's understandable because nobody in the PDP can stop him from going to prison if sentenced. I didn't say we are all sense. So, those who are integrity challenged and have files at the EFCC, when presented the truth about intentions towards sentencing, they behave in a way that you call the camping. But we know it. They simply do that to keep themselves out of cells, out of prison. So Buhari is, in effect, using fear to induce membership. If you use the EFCC to drive membership, you should understand what that means. You cannot mention one human being that does not have challenge. Okay? Mm. So those things, you heard the other day, uh, Governor Obiano went to complain to President Buhari that politicians were inducing false flag operations in the East. And you know that is, for a governor to say that, okay. don't forget, when asked on China television, Governor Zodema also said the same thing, that there were false flag operations mm -hmm. being carried out by politicians. Okay. Obiano has repeated it. I have said that on this station twice. I've said that on channels. I've said that on the BBC. That these are false flag operations being committed by fifth columnists working for the Buhari administration. Do you have your claim? Do you have your proof? Yes, one proof, let me tell you. I was in a worry the day when there was the raid and burning of the police headquarters. I watched from my hotel room as they operated for three hours, 20 minutes. I later in the morning I went to the police headquarters to check. I was looking. No single gunshot. When I later asked, was any policeman killed? They said no. Did you kill anybody? They said no. So how could that happen? For three hours, 20 minutes and there is no reaction. That meant there was a stand down. And the only authority that can instruct an actionable stand down is order from above. With that, I concluded these things are staged. So, and if you look at the government, they're not honest. Why do you think someone will be interested in staging such 
actions. Because the people who work for President Buhari are the same people who work with him for Sani Abacha. He took the death of Sani Abacha for Sajay Rochas to come confess at the Puta panel that I'm, all they were I'm doing were you, what, false flag what, operations. What, what, what would be what, 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 what exactly are, are they trying to gain? What was what were they trying to gain under Sani Abacha government when they were doing false flag operations, trying to create impression? It was the uh, uh, what did they call it Nadeko. So what they were trying to do there is that uh, a bunch of uh, young propagandists called the IPOB people, that's what they are. The IPOB is a propaganda organization propagating Biafra. They don't have the sophistry to instruct the police high command and the army high command to stand down for three hours, 20 minutes of very devilish operations. Hmm. Show me any of those boys with the actionable strength to instruct and stand down to the police and army and the DSS for three hours, 20 minutes of those operations. I just looked and I, I got there to the police headquarters. I didn't see no mark and I asked the policeman, was anybody here? They said no. Did you also show? They said no. And I knew there was a stand down. So you ask yourself, who in Nigeria will give instructions for a stand down? And within 10 minutes of that thing happening, the IG said it was IPOB. Yet, he didn't find out in two weeks who killed Ebony people in Ebony state after they were attacked by the same unknown government. That's what we now see. So we see unknown government everywhere. We also see unknown government shoot down the Alpha Jet in Zamfara state. Unknown government kidnap and kill military officers at NDA. <laughs> and yet no reaction no action so who are these unknown government you must ask yourself so you think um, your party the PDP have has the answer to all of this yes the PDP will run an inclusive government the PDP will respect the direction of principles upon which the Nigerian experiment was founded and that is a principle of inclusion of seeing everybody as one. Of first securing the lives of Nigerians, not allowing Bororo Fulanis from Mali to come and kill Nigerians. Of course, you had the Emmy of Muli say that, and in order to situate him, they went to catch some people and say these are the people giving trouble. But why should they be here in the first place? Governor Ganduje has said, stop them from coming in from the sub region with their guns. And other leaders say, eh, is the is FYA Kowas protocol on free movement and goods and services? No. If President Buhari has worked hard with other West African leaders to implement the 2015 peace agreement in Mali, those refugees will stay in their country, not come here. Fine. He's managed to say they should be registered. But where would you get land to give them? And the most important instrument in governance is trust. Now, people don't trust Buhari. When he says he wants to do grazing reserve, we don't trust him. He says car colony. We don't trust him. He talks about consolidation of underground surface water plus six kilometers of embankment land. We don't trust him. He talks about farm estates. You saw the killings in Izombe. I returned from Owerri this morning. The killings in Izombe is unacceptable. If you are going to kill the people and burn their houses... Because you think you want to bring them agricultural advantages. Please don't bring. They don't want it. The one that will kill them. They don't want it. How come all we have is death and destruction in the name of agricultural policies? We've never seen this before in Nigeria. How come? Since Buhari came, all he's been doing is sick land. Sick land. Sick land. Today there are more than a million people in IDP camps in Benue State. Same thing in Plateau State, why foreigners live in their villages. That should not be acceptable. You know about in, in Borono, when Nigerians went back to their ancestral lands and they were killed. Garibashe, who told us that the people should have gotten permission from him and Buhari before Borono. going back to their ancestral lands. That's not proper. You remember when uh, 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 Shino Adeshino 
say that uh, uh, we should give up ancestral lands than fighting to keep it. Is that proper? Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs>